In the beginning, we were so in love, unstoppable. <laughs> but then it got worse. A Lifetime original movie. I'm Detective Walker. This is Detective Young. I'm sorry to bother you. The night of the fire. Just have a few questions. Oh, from when my husband tried to murder me? After such a short grieving process, we started a new relationship. You are a person of interest. Wait, what was that? I think I saw my dead husband. Who the cops think I murdered, so there's that. You have to stop. He's dead. No, he is coming for me. The evidence fits opposing stories. The ex-wife seeking revenge and the abusive ex-husband who fakes his own death. It's not complicated. He tried to kill me. I'm not imagining this. I just need you to please believe me. Every breath she takes. Premier Saturday, March 25th today. Only on Lifetime. Welcome back, everyone, to our second panel of this today. We are joined by e executive producer and star Tamala Jones co-producer and star Brian White, and star Jacquet Harry from the upcoming movie, Every Breath She Takes. Welcome all. Thank you. Hi. All right. So let's go ahead and get started with our first question. Our first question comes from Gerard Horton. Gerard, please unmute your mic. Good afternoon. How's everyone doing today? Good. How are you? Yeah, hello. Well, well, first of all, I want to say congratulations on the new project. Um, it seems great. Um, I want you guys to talk about what was the process in selecting this movie and presenting it to the viewers. And also to Ms. Jones, um, you're the executive producer. What you're wearing both hats of being a boss and also being a part of it. So talk about that experience also, too and how exciting that was to bring that to the viewers and how it may resonate with the viewers um, going forward. Um, it's been great. Uh, I love working with everyone that is on this movie. We got Jack Harry, who I have loved forever, and Brian White and so many other great talented people to come and play with us. And the experience was amazing. It was really effortless as far as uh, the work was concerned because everyone was prepared and and ready to go and giving it their best so um that was easy and and then I love acting so <laughs> it was nice and the storyline I love I love a, a good thriller I love a good psychological thriller and we got the most amazing crazy person to be <laughs> to play that role <laughs> Mr. Brian Wright. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's great. I mean, um, your range over the years from comedy, the drama, and now to the thriller has been great for us viewers and what you contribute to the culture. So we appreciate that of you giving back and showing us your range. And uh, we appreciate this thriller also, too. And uh, we thank you for it. And uh, we appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Gerard. Up next, we have Malik Pollard from at Mad Flavor TV. Hi, how you guys doing? Good. How are you? Hello. Good, good. So my, my question is uh, to you, Tamala. I wanted to know, um, you know, as as a woman going through this and dealing with an abusive uh, relationship, how does one find their, their power and their strength? How, how does a woman find, where do you draw from to, to get that power and strength to leave a relationship or really, you know, as you had to do, tackle this thing head on when everyone didn't believe that uh, your, your husband was still alive and not dead? <laughs> well, I feel like everyone has a breaking point. You know, it's it's always going to come to a head uh, if you've been abused for so long. Unfortunately, there's only two ways you can do it. You can either kill that person <laughs> or you can leave, you know. Um, but in this movie, I, I think that my character had a choice because she really, really, really loved her husband and loved the family that they had, even though he was he was a, a, a lot possessive. Um, 
I think she had a choice to like really uh, keep her sanity and get through this and trust her instincts or just let it all go to hell. And she trusted her instincts. She got out of there. Absolutely. Congratulations on everyone. <laughs> Thank awesome. you. Thank you. Thank you, Malik. Up next, we have Dr. Pam from We Empower Magazine, who just lowered her hand. So we will go on to um, Big E of listen if you, I don't have the rest. Oh, listen if you will, faith and sports. Hey, good evening. How you, good afternoon. I'm sorry. How you guys doing? Good. Well. Good. All right, all right. Well, my name is Big E. I'm from the Listen, If You Will, Faith and Sports radio show and also on praise.fm. So my question is for Miss Jackie Harry. It's uh it's 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 such a wonderful pleasure seeing you. I've grew up watching you um on 227 with uh uh Lester, Mr. Hal Williams. I'm from Baton Rouge, Louisiana as well. <laughs> so uh I just wanted to ask you, man. I mean, you've been you've been doing it a long time and I, I know you've been on several films what has been your staying power what has been uh what kept you going all of these years and to be in this great film these young people they have kept me um as my girls used to say current and relevant <laughs> i've known gotcha. uh, about uh tamla a long time i watched her and i know she don't want to talk about her on castle i love murder mysteries too and i watched all <laughs> castle and uh, my, you know him, I've never met you, but I know you through my girlfriend, Robin Gibbons, you know, you are a fine actor. So they Thanks. keep me uh, evolving, you know, which is what my, my goal is, especially on Women's Day, which is to stay humble as I can, keep the ego in check, uh, see what's ahead of you, stay in the present, stay in the current. And that's what keeps me going. And I didn't know it. I'm still amazed that uh, I'm, I'm open to this. I mean, I'm on a computer by myself. Ain't nobody else here. This is the first time I used to have help. <laughs> Uh, you know, so I'm, they're keeping me um, alive in, in terms of uh, my knowing and my knowingness. You know, and I really appreciate you. I love you guys. I, I don't know you as well, but it, it enriches me and energizes me to see you guys doing your thing. So my thing is to support the generation after me and the generation after that. That's, that's my goal. Yes, ma'am. I appreciate it, Ms. Jack K., Ms. Tamala Jones, and Mr. Brian White. You, you two are one of my great actresses and actors as well, man. So y'all keep Thank up you. the good work. Bless you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Biggie. Up next, we have Gospel Spotlight. <laughs> Jay Ellison from Gospel Spotlight. Uh, my question is for Jackie Harry. Uh, Jackie, it's basically like the last question. Did you ever think from 227 and other shows that you did, that you would still be around, be relevant, and still doing your thing? No. <laughs> I'm being totally honest. I thought I'd be retired in, you know, a condo in San Diego by the water with some young man. I mean, you know, younger man. Uh, not you, not you, Brian. Not, you, Brian. <laughs> not that young. You know, about, about, you know, about 55. You know, I'll take about 55. That's all I can keep up with. Now, no, seriously, I really didn't know I'd be around. And but I do it, like I said, by staying, you know, with these younger people, because they know what's happening. The future is theirs, no matter if you agree with it or not. You know, and a lot of people, you know, they're against rap, they're against a lot of stuff, but I'm not. I'm open to it because it's your world, you own it, it's your time. You know, I'm a baby boomer and they hate boomers, but you know, we think we have it all, I had it all. So I just want to stay current. And, and, and know what's going on in the world, you know, and I never thought that I would uh, still be here talking to you guys. I thought I'd be somewhere doing a couple of little projects here and there, but I'm still in the world and I'm very grateful for it. You know, won't he do it? So all the time. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie, you are an institution, an icon, and keep on doing your thing. We Thank love you, Jackie. You. Thank yes. you. So sweet. Thank you. Thank you. Up next, we have a question from Noir online. Hello, everyone. Tamara Shanae here from Noir online. My question is for the entire panel. I wanted to know what are some of the conversations you hope amplify amongst viewers from both a male and female perspective surrounding domestic violence? 
Oh, you go ahead, Tay. <laughs> oh, no, I'm going to put it on Brian. <laughs> Just that the conversation no. happens. Just that the conversation happens. I'm, I'm an eldest brother. Uh, I have five sisters, no brothers. was raised by a single mom. And uh, communication is key. So if, if this, this story gets couples talking, um, that's helpful. You know, when men and women talk, good things happen. You know, uh, communication is key. So I'm just hoping that that we discuss uh, as a society domestic violence and, you know, get to the root of what's causing it. Because what's causing it is a lack of communication, I think, being on the same page with your partner. That's what uh, the disconnect was, I believe, in this story, is our two characters start, they started the relationship because they communicated, that communication broke down, it led to bad things. And uh, I think stories like this, open up the lines of communication and they're very healthy and cathartic. So I'm hoping people will talk about relationships. Mm, yeah, it's pretty yes. deep. Yeah, I don't know. I don't believe in it. I'm a very strong woman. I don't, even if you look at me like you're going to hit me, it's over. You know, I walk out right. the door and I want to raise my, you know, kids and grandkids to have that strength because it takes courage to admit that you have been abused. You know, a lot of people are ashamed of it and that's what we have to get rid of, the shame and the guilt that you stayed in a relationship because you can love somebody that abuses you. And that's at the heart of it as well. You know, and like Tamala was saying before, being a woman, we have triple, triple re responsibilities, you know, wanting love, wanting to nurture our kids, our man, you know, um, and our careers. You know, I, I used to think that women couldn't do it all. And I'm, I'm just learning that we can, right. it, but it takes an extra effort. And the extra effort is to, like Brian says, educate your man or your woman that I don't want to be treated this way. And if you're going to continue this, let's get some help. So let's deal with therapy. Let's get in couples therapy. Let's just talk to our moms and stuff and wonder why it is. Because sometimes, and most men share the brunt of responsibility of taking care of everything. And that can build up. Mm -hmm. All of that happens and it. You know, you can just snap, you know, but women have snapped too. I, I've hit a couple of men in my lifetime. Women don't talk about it. But then when I got hit back, I stopped. <laughs> but, <laughs> it, it really, it seems from something that's happening in the home and your upbringing. And that, that's where the complications come in. And you do have to communicate, but with a professional or somebody you trust, your pastor, somebody that can really help you get to the bottom of why you're so angry. Because that's usually where it starts, some sort of anger. Right. Yes. And I, I also hope that on top of, uh, bringing up communication and communicating with your partner more and, and getting some sort of therapy. If you are in that, if, if your partner's not willing to do any of that, then I hope that this movie also inspires those to get up and go know when it's time to leave, because not all relationships are, uh, to be worked on, you know, and you have to go through your personal journey as this character did to, to understand that and to understand that everyone is an individual and and no one owns anyone we're here as a partnership so when you talk about communication that's part of partnership but when you don't have that you know when to go right thank you all very much yes thank you up next we have afro vegas magazine Afro Vegas Magazine, if you could unmute your mic. All right. Oh, hello. There you are. Hello, everyone. How are you all doing? Good. Good. Yeah. I'm so anxious to, to see this movie. I've not seen it yet, but I'm really looking forward to it. So tell me how difficult it is for you to, to prepare for a movie like this, because it's definitely, you know, a serious topic that's being talked about today and that's going on today. Is that a baby? Yes. Sorry. A yes. real baby? Yeah. <laughs> that's my granddaughter. Oh, oh I love the one. Hey. <laughs> He's so cute. Um, I think the preparation for this movie, I didn't really have to prepare much because I knew that I was. I was going to be working with some major players. I mean, I, I have the honor of working with Jack Hay, someone that I have admired for so long. And I, I was uh, taken back. I have to say this, Jack Hay, you performed your ASS off. That scene was, it was, in, it was incredible. And uh, I, I just knew that, that we had the right 
actors playing these characters. Brian White always, he gives it to you. And, and mm -hmm. one thing I know he's really good at is playing that crazy deranged partner. <laughs> With that baby face, I know that fine yes. face. I know, <laughs> you'll be fine and mean. Mm -hmm. So I just, for me, I left myself open to whatever the vibe was gonna be on set. How about you guys? Mm -hmm. I came into it, you know, trying to service the boss, the, you know, Stamla's the executive producer on this one and she's the star and, and the story's about her. And so my first uh, time with her was asking, you know, how she saw the movie so I could figure out how to support her and lift her up because, you know, this is a team game. <laughs> and at the end of the day, you got to feel Jules pain and her spear and, and why she's doing the things she's, she's doing. So I wanted to get real clarity and Tamla was very good at communicating with me about what she needed. And we tried to give it to her. I tried to give it to her as soon as possible on every take so that we could get it. And then Darren, uh, our director was amazing. And it was a, it was a fun, it was a fun journey. Yeah, and he's true. I echo that because um, I like to support women in positions of power. And I love seeing my little young darlings coming up. Um, you, you know, of course, Re Regina King, you know, when y'all get in that director's chair, because I, you know, I've directed not movies, though, but just sitcoms. And I know the immense responsibility comes with it. And you you handle yourself very well, Tamla. And you, you were very kind. I was very comfortable. You know, I got a lot Good. of attention. <laughs> Which, you know, which I love, <laughs> but from the staff, you know, not just for me, Jack A, but for the, the, the part, you know, so it's, it, it was very enlightening because I didn't know you were a producer, you know, so I got there. <laughs> oh, she got a little power, you know, <laughs> so that's great. No, it's great to see you uh, coming into your own after all these years, you know, I know it was a Thank journey. You. People don't know you have to put in your book. <laughs> that part. Yes. Thank that you, part. Jackie. Thank you. Well, thanks you guys for answering my question. And I look forward to seeing the movie. And I love all of you. I've followed all of you for a long time. Um, I, I just can't wait. And I'm so excited for it. So excited. And congratulations, Pamela. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Up next, we have Suzanne from TV Meg. Suzanne, please unmute. Hi, uh, I'm a fan of y'all too. Uh, I love Castle. I watched every episode like Jackie did. And Brian, I just loved Ambitions and I'm still mad that they canceled that. Yeah. And, Jackie, and Jackie, I watch you every day on Days of Our Lives. So oh. huge fan. <laughs> um, Thank you. What I want to know is Tamala, since you're the producer, uh, I noticed that there are a lot of former and current uh, daytime soap actors on this show. Was, was that just a coincidence or was it some plan or? You know, I think it's a coincidence because I, I really love everyone's artistry that, that was chosen to play the role. And I think you just now brought it to my attention that there are <laughs> <laughs> I, I never even thought of that. I was just like, yes, you know, and, and been fans of everyone, so. Wow. <laughs> yeah, Tuck, Tuck Watkins the uh, and Dan Godier were both from One Life to Live and uh, Lamont. That's right. Lamont was on Days of Our Lives and uh, Katrina and Tisha were both on Bold and Beautiful. So, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's I my love jam. It. <laughs> well, it was great seeing all of you. Thank you. Nice Thank to see you, you too. Wonderful, thank you. Up next, we have Jamie Ruby from Sci-Fi Vision. Jamie. Hello, so for all three of you, what did the playing the role teach you about yourself? <laughs> that, <laughs> that I can still play somebody's mama. Oh. <laughs> I don't really look forward to it, but now I do, who knew? I like being uh, wise. You know, I like that young people are looking at their, oh, especially in America, you know, in Europe, they celebrate older people regularly but here we're just learning to you know black families to just when you grow up you know with grandmama and grandpapa you know telling you everything and raising you in some cases so it's nice to be treated with that bit of respect and she respects her mom in in the um the movie which is good she should have never got with him though you should have never I should never <laughs> no, you leave him alone but you know love does strange things so i'm surprised i enjoy playing somebody's mother that sounds very trite but and it takes I, I got to interject there. You look way too young to be playing somebody's mama. I'm just going to say that, but you did a good job. And a, <laughs> and a big old ring light. I got the biggest ring light I've ever seen in my life here. 
They, they said it cost eighty nine dollars. <laughs> oh, uh, uh-uh. uh. <laughs> I know you got oh. one. Oh, <laughs> thank you, dog. I forgot I had that shit. I could have put money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> what are you surprised about? Yeah, it was Brian's part. Yeah, your, your um, turn. Uh, not surprised, just to reaffirm very much that having a seat at the producer's table is where it's at. You get to be privy to and a part of the creative conversations. You get to hear, be at the table when Tamla's expressing what her vision and goals are. So you can absorb that and have that information. As just an actor, you don't always have access to all of the information. And I find it very, very helpful in just doing my acting job to be a part of the production team and, and allowed to listen to the be a fly on the wall of the creative meeting. So I, I just really enjoyed that. I know that that's where I want to be moving forward and a bigger part of the production team. Not that I don't want to act, but being a producer is definitely uh, for me. And I enjoyed it very much. So thank you for this opportunity. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was surprised how many times I left my body I kept having so many outer body experiences, but they were so great. It was like I was watching everything outside when I was in this team so many times. So I was surprised about, <laughs> about that, but it was great. It was really great to just watch it from that perspective, watch everybody and still be present. Thank you, all of you. Wonderful. Thank you, Jamie. Um, up next, we have Clarence Jones. Is that my cousin? <laughs> Yay! Hello, everybody. Hey, Jackie, Tamil, and Brian. Hey, Hi, Larry Jones from Clark TV Network, and I love you guys as actors. I think you're amazing, Brian. I don't even understand how you could be so cute and be so mean. Oh my God, it's so funny because you're like a wolf in sheep clothing. <laughs> The character is, yes. I tell you, that character is amazing and you were able to pull it off and just mess up people's minds. Something you did the whole time you were with her, but then now you just reappearing as a ghost. That's just crazy. Um, Jack A, you are Miss Comedy Lady. Was it really difficult for you to take such an intense role and pour yourself into seeing the drama that your daughter was going through and then bring it back to reality? And then the transition of going comedy to drama, that's pretty traumatic. And Tamala, to be involved with you having the acting and then doing the other part of it or producing it, that's pretty difficult. How did you handle all that? So those are my questions. Let me turn this off. <laughs> well, I can tell you that everyone made it easy uh, as far as the, the producing hat. They, they, they made it easy. It, it just was the best experience. I definitely would love to do that again. Um, but acting and, you know, acting is my passion. I love acting. So that's never a hard thing for me to get into or enjoy. But being a producer, I, I thought it would be a lot more difficult. And it, it really wasn't. And I think that it had uh, the majority to do with who was involved. Right. Who was, who was I playing with? Yeah. Right. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, I come from, uh, I started off in drama. I, matter of fact, my goal when I... Um, graduated from college was to teach I was teaching history and I wanted to be a great dramatic actress and win an Oscar you know I was looking at <laughs> Rosin Cash you know and you know Diana Sands and Diane Carroll those were my objects of of success you know as a, as a fine actor and when okay. I got to two seven I didn't want to do it I was like I do no comedy I got a great career in New York and I was like I ain't going over there you know I know we all did this because you don't really <laughs> want to be famous you just want to do great work yeah yes yeah, so so the transition back and forth no I just happened to be funny I didn't know that believe it or not you know I didn't know I could be funny but, you know you keep doing a thing and doing it over and over you get great at it so timing is key in comedy but drama is finding out who the yeah. character is yeah. before you even begin learning the line learn who the character is so once you know who the character is and they write it for you mm -hmm. it just rolls off so they wrote it so well and because we were doing the scene and Tom was like, oh, girl, you got them words. But <laughs> they, write, they write in your meter. And I know Brian knows yeah. when they write in your meter, it's easier to attack the character, you know. And sometimes you you question if you should have more difficulty. The difficulty right. is when you think it's so easy. It comes a little too easy. You want it to be more difficult. And that's where the, the challenge is. So you're right. The drama and getting to the meat of it, not just trying to act, you know. Don't, don't let them see how you're acting. Don't let anybody see you act. 
you got to be it. So that's where the difficulty comes, where you got to, like he had to be this man, this mean man, but you did do it kind of well, I must say. Oh, I got scared for you, Tam. I was like, pick up something, girl, hit it. <laughs> yeah, so he was being it as opposed to learning the lines and yeah. acting. You know, yeah. so to speak, and but she wasn't afraid, and that's what I like. She was, she wasn't scared, but a little bit, <laughs> <laughs> a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Uh, you guys were all awesome. all, you had all them Tybo skills. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you guys were all awesome. I'm excited. I cannot wait to see the film. Congratulations, and I enjoyed the conversation with you. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. We have time for just a couple more questions. Um, up next is 107.9, The Beat. Hello, everyone. My name is Shayna. Hello, Tamala, Brian, and Jack A. Hi, Shayna. Hi, Shayna. Um, so dude, when I saw this cast lineup, I'm like, oh, my goodness. Like, all my the people I've been watching since I've been a, a youth to now. So I was so excited to see that. And everybody did an amazing job. And Brian, I don't know. You kind of and um, I could do all do I, what I could do better all by myself. We kind of saw the craziness, but this took a whole <laughs> nother <Yeah>. turn. <laughs> and Tamala, you know, this was a different role I saw you in as well, because I always see you as that first girl and to see you like scared. It was another side of you that I enjoyed watching. Um, Jack A, you talked about how you was excited playing a mother and you didn't know if you, you know, years years on you didn't know if that was something you would want to do but now you're appreciative of that um how was it like once you like come into agreement like okay I can be somebody's mother on a film um because uh, I had an image of myself all my career you know which is you know I don't think of myself that way anymore thank god but <laughs> you're appealing you're sensual you know all the things women want to be and then a lot of women tell me if they get married and have kids they feel less of that and the man you know if you're in a partnership you can, you know, bolster each other up and you're still appealing, you're still wanted, you're still needed, you know, in a woman way, not just a mother or somebody's best friend when you do these parts, you know, and I don't mind being the best friend either, but being a mother takes on a whole nother role. Like my son now, he's 29 and we're more friends than ever and I'm loving it. I didn't, I didn't know it would be this way, you know, that I would appreciate him and he's a young man and I want him to come with me, to come to me for whatever. I like him to be totally honest. And some of it I kind of go, oh Lord. But <laughs> like the fact that I'm able to to let him know you have the power. You know, everybody has the power to become a wonderful human being or decent human being or a person with character and integrity. So yeah. th that's what I do now when I play these these roles, these mother roles, and still in character and integrity and honesty and your kids you know even when they they messing up you know oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's the hard part you know letting them know that maybe you messed up but we can get it right we can get it better anyway so that's okay. the difficulty thank you so much for answering my question i love you all thank you so much for what you all do for the culture and i just want to give you your flowers now thank you thank you, thank you. awesome thank you we know we have a bunch of hands and we appreciate the excitement, but this will be the final question for this panel. Up next is April B. from Mental Intimacy Magazine. Mm. Hi, everyone. Um, hi, Jack A., Brian, Tamala. First of all, this was exciting to see. I watched it this morning. Um, and this is what my magazine is based off of, mental health. Um, so being a survivor of that as well, Tamla, I want to reach out to you when it came down to pleading and letting people know that your husband was actually stalking you, wasn't deceased and telling the police, we saw Tisha, um, playing a role as the police officer, having them to want to believe your story. How challenging was that for you? It was very challenging, but I think that the part that, that Jules had a leg up on was that she was already in therapy. She was getting help. She was had someone that she could talk these things through. And I think that was where she drew her strength from. You know, not always when people are in situations like that, do they have a therapist um, to say, okay, I got to fight back, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think with that, you know, the, her her mental stability was somewhat there and to try to convince everyone she was not going to give up. And she knew that I, I have to prove that I'm 
to them, I'm not crazy and they do need to look into this. And when there was just one person, it just sometimes just takes one person to believe in you and believe that you're not crazy to give you the force to go even full throttle, even more full throttle. I think that Lamont Archie's character did that for Jules as well. Yeah, I loved it. I thank you for this storyline. Um, I can't wait to watch it again and retweet it live. You guys were fascinating. Brian White you was scaring me the whole entire time um, as he just kept popping out of the blue. But I thank you guys so much. I appreciate you. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you all. And thank you to the three of you for this wonderful panel. Um, make sure to tune in to Every Breath She Takes, premiering Saturday, March 25th at 8 on Lifetime. <laughs>